All right, Keldrick Carper, Louisiana native, four-star uh, DB coming out of high school in 2017, member of the Blueprint, um, 2020 Community Service Award winner, 2021 Werfel Award for Community Service, academic and athletic watch list nominee, uh, 2021 SEC Football Community Service Team. Casey, my friend, how are you? Happy holiday. Welcome to the show. So, uh, oh, did you mute yourself? Okay. Yes, yeah, I just, yeah. Hey, um, Jordan, I appreciate um, being invited. Um, I was, when you, when you first reached out to me, um, I was very excited. I was talking about, I say, like, you know what? Yes, yeah, like you had Chase on here. You had, no, not Chase, you had Leon Carlina. And, and Carlina. And Leon, I, yeah. Yeah, he's had Chase on. Yeah, but I was like, yeah. That's definitely something I'd be interested in. I hope I get the call. <laughs> and, 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 and lo and behold, I got the call. But absolutely, I'm excited. And um, and I'm, I, I'm ready to get started. All right, let's do it. So you're a super senior this year. Um, and for those of you who don't know, being a super senior basically just means you've exceeded your, uh, your standard four, right? Your standard four years of college. So I have to ask, what brought you back? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. It's a, a number of things. Um, last year during COVID, was very unpredictable, um, just a lot of moving parts. And, you know, the, the, the factor of not having um, the opportunity to play in front of a full um, a fan base, a full stadium in Kyle Field, uh, it was like, you know, uh, going out on that note didn't feel just right. And we had our best season um, uh, as, a, as a class. So last year, we, we, we did really well. And it was just a, de a decision that was um, taken into account, you know, my own personal um, draft uh, status. And, you know, just wanted to uh, go at it one more time. I feel like we could have been even better and we, we could have had a chance to, uh, to accomplish even greater, greater heights and greater goals. You know, so uh, so all all that put together, I, I just feel like I, I I had some stuff that I needed to take care of still here in College Station, um, and I've been able to do that. And uh, there were some surprises on um, um, that we we're going to talk about later on that uh, that, that taking place, including me medical retiring that I just didn't see happening. You know, but just a, just a, just a lot of different things. Uh, but I say the number one thing was definitely having another opportunity to play in front of Kyle Field again. That's just a very uh, euphoric experience that, you know, not many can really um, under, understand. It's one thing being a fan. It's another thing being on that field and being able to just bask in the moment. And um, I got a chance to experience that um, this season. So those, those are some of the big reasons why I decided to come back. Yeah, no, I can't even I can't even imagine what it's like to play on Kyle Field. Like being in the stands is electric. Like it's one of those you you hear about it, talk about the 12th May, talk about the spirit, and people might you know hear that and be like, oh, well, okay, like that. That's every football. Team. No, th there's something different about it. So um, I can definitely understand that. So you alluded to your medical retirement, um, and I just wanted you to kind of talk about what all that means so but the the general understanding of it at least my general understanding of it is that it's almost um an insurance policy in the sense that you know because of whatever the medical issue is at hand you will no longer be able to participate however your scholarship will still be maintained you won't be penalized essentially for things out of your control so is that is that pretty accurate yes that is that's that's very accurate okay. um and there's and there, there's just there's a there's another layer even beyond that. Um, yeah. So full disclosure, um, um, going coming into the season, I had suffered two concussions in my life, um, at least documented one in high school when I was a sophomore. And ironically, my one my sophomore year here, when we played against Alabama. Um, I suffered two concussions and, um, you know, coming into the season wasn't going to be something that I, I would think um, was going to be a problem. But um, Colorado game, that was a uh, week two, um, you know, um, just took a took a really, really big shot to the head. And um, I felt really out of it. I felt out of sorts, disoriented. And, you know, I made the, uh, the decision that um, many of us as athletes and competitors make um, sometimes not the best decision, but we choose to play through a lot of the stuff um, that, you know, we really shouldn't play through. And in that moment, you know, I, I said, I can't turn my back on my team, my brothers, 
It was a very big moment. It was a very close game. And I just felt like I couldn't abandon the guys. And I I, I, I played all the way through. And, you know, um, looking back on it in retrospect, was it the right decision or not? Yeah, it wasn't the right decision. Would I change it? I don't think I would. You know, and it's just, you know, you just accept the fate of, um, you know, of, of what happens um, um, down the line. So that happened. Um, I was I was uh, sidelined for uh, the next three to four weeks for sure. And it was a pretty nasty experience. And then, uh, you know, I, uh, I was I was I was trying my best to fight my way back. Um, I was able to finally get back and start practicing again. And it just didn't feel right. I just didn't feel like my normal self, like KC, you know, just my movements, my running, my me making collision. I felt like I was just, I was uh, tense. I would, I would tense up before uh, big hits and I just didn't feel right. And it, and it felt dangerous, you know, and I felt like I, I would, I would, I was putting myself at harm, but I was also putting my, my teammates in jeopardy, my team at jeopardy for not being 100%. And, you know, that takes, uh, I, I had to make a decision to, you know, um, be fully honest with the medical staff and let them know, hey, I'm not feeling right. I took another nasty shot to the head, to the head. Um, um, the day that I was clear to come back to practice, that same day I took another nasty, yeah, exactly, during during a special teams period. And the, the guy who did it, it wasn't intentional, it wasn't malicious, it was a normal football play, you know, but that's that's uh that's what people don't understand sometimes. I don't think even us as as, as athletes, football players understand like you know what we sign up for is a, a um a, a pretty raw deal. It's a pretty intense sport. So you know um it happened. I have, I was honest with the medical staff, my parents, you know my close one. I say yeah, I, this it's just I don't feel right. Uh, we need to reevaluate. We need to you know just look at things long term, and you know. Um, Set out and kind of just, you know, a, a lot of thoughts, a lot of uh, conversations, a lot of self-reflection. And I made the tough decision, which was putting myself um, 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 as the, uh, the top priority in my future self. Um, and I said, you know, I need to I need to hang up the cleats. And, um, you know, technically could I have still played kind of class to be playing right now. Yes. You know, but uh, I was I, I am uh, more focused on. Um, the long-term aspects of who I am and what I can be, you know. So I know it's a lot. I, I just wanted to be, you know, up, upfront and honest about the whole process um, and where I'm at now. So yeah, that's that that that's that's basically what what led to my medical retirement this year. Wow. So thank you for sharing. One, um, it's especially being an athlete, right? Like talking about the things that we cannot see. Concussions are very real, very serious, and as much as we like to think that we as a society, as a sports community, look at concussions and take them seriously, there's still a lot of stigma there. There's still a lot of, ah, just play through it. It's, you know, it's just a headache or it's just, so I actually was gonna ask you when those first two concussions uh, happened, cause you alluded to those in your statement. So thanks for clearing that up. Um, but I also wanted to ask in those three to four weeks, cause that's, Concussions, it's it's hard, right? Like you can't measure them. You can't put a thermometer in your mouth and say, oh, you know, well, you're, you know, it, it's just, how are you? How are you feeling? And it's, how are you feeling in sports? It's like, well, you can do it. You, you look fine. You appear to be a-okay. So why can't you get out on the field or the court or, you know, whatever it may be. So um, in those, in that period or as you were recovering, so what you, you said you didn't feel like yourself. And I've had a concussion. I've had multiple concussions in my life. Um, so the symptoms vary. So I wanted to ask in that time, if you can recall, like what were your outside of feeling outside of yourself, what were those symptoms for you? Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this, the, this, this concussion was the worst one I've suffered. It was, it was, it was, it was not fun. Um, and you know, what, uh, what, uh, you're familiar with, um, when you, when you, um, when you actually go through the concussion protocol, you get like a, a list of different symptoms and, and you have to like, you know, um, of a scale from zero to six, I believe what, what we did. And I was asked that every day um, and I gave um, my scores and it, it would always be pretty high, especially early on. But the main the main symptoms were sensitivity to light, you know, six of uh, six, uh, four months ago, I couldn't I couldn't, you know, be on this laptop right now, it, it, it would, it would have been excruciating, um, um, lack of concentration and focus. Um, but yeah, those, those are the main symptoms, uh, 
Um, and it, it caused it caused me I, I was in a dark room a lot of times. And that is not fun. It, it, it's, it's not fun. And it's actually pretty dangerous because you can fall into a state of depression. Um, you can you can you can you can you can fall into a very you know uh, low place in your life if you're not careful. And what I what I attempted to do um, was just fill myself with positive affirmations, you know, constant meditational prayer, um, you know, just reflection. If I couldn't read, I would listen to a lecture or, or something on, on the, uh, that you know that interests me just to keep me going because you know that was a very that was a dark that was a dark moment in my life and I, and there was a lot of questions um that were just unanswered at that point and you know i had a lot of expectations of myself going into the season and now i can accomplish those and that was a very tough pill to swallow but i was able to you know ultimately um come out the victor in the, in the process so yeah i love that i love that not that the symptoms part i'm so sorry that happened um it's a scary thing concussions are scary um you really just don't unless you've had one i mean it takes a, a like empathy right like you you can't see it it's not a it's not a scar it's you know it's not a broken arm it's nothing in a cast like but it's a very serious thing um so it just reminded me of my experience with a concussion so i it's my freshman year throwing it back a little bit freshman year um i got back screen whatever i was a little rattled after the game and i remember not i had a i think a chemistry test maybe in a couple of days after that and i was like man I can't. <laughs> I'm sitting down trying to study. I'm like, I cannot do this. I don't know what's going on. So I lay down, whatever. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't utter the word concussion. Like I just, I refused to do so. Um, Cause you know, being a freshman just comes with a lot of added, but any year really like you as a senior, I'm sure you're thinking like, I mean, I want to be okay. I want to be okay right. so bad, but then it gets to a point where you're like, mm, you know, maybe not. So I just remember that next day, I'm like, man, my head's still hurting still struggling and my best friend at the time she's like you need to tell the trainer and I'm like no I don't I'm fine I'm fine I'm just just hit my head you know I I'm okay she's like no you need to do so so after just you know being annoyed for a little while um I did and we went through the concussion protocol and they diagnosed me with a concussion so fast forward this is around Thanksgiving time um, so I guess it was like a couple of days before we went away to Vancouver and you're not supposed to fly with a concussion. So my mild symptoms that just, I wasn't feeling like myself or, um, like being, not being able to concentrate and a little bit of light sensitivity turned into pounding headaches, sitting in a dark room. I, it, on Thanksgiving, I was in, a, in my hotel room. I couldn't even go to the arena. Uh, sensitivity is a light and sound actually. So all the things you just said um, just wow. really resonated. It just brought me back to that moment. Jordan, if, if, um, if, if, if I, I, yeah, I'm no, sorry. But, no, you're fine. You're fine. You know, I, you, you maybe you, you brought up a bad memory about, yeah, yeah, you're not supposed to fly when you have a concussion. And I didn't mention that when the game was over and we went to the plane, like I was fine once I got, got on the plane. When I got off the plane, it's my head. It felt like like I, it, it was just being rattled. Like there was a pounding in the, in my in my front temple. So you made me remember that um, that part. That it was it was it was it was really bad. Um, and then second, um, you hit on a big word, empathy. And this process had made me, you know, because like you said, concussions. There's no scar. There's no you know. There's nothing you can see. Like that you like it's it's not like a torn ACL where you have a big cast on your knees like oh I fam I'm praying for you or bro I, I wish the best for you or hey sis like I, I hope I hope you 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 get you get better um soon you know concussion it really is on the person unless unless you you're stumbling and and people can obviously see that you're not right and you need some help it's really on the person to like have the courage to say hey I like I have to I have to be honest about it and it made me realize um not not something that I didn't know but it made it more evident that to be always conscious that people are dealing with things that we may not be aware of and to, you know, always like ask, Hey, how's everything going? That's like a simple, just, just like, you know, acknowledging their acknowledging, acknowledging others of uh, other people's presence. It goes a long way because, you know, people, people go through things in life, you know, especially during the times that we're in, there's a lot of stuff that happens. And, 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 and a lot of times we bottle up these emotions, these thoughts, it, uh, it, 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 it ranges on the spectrum and we don't have an outlet 
to you know express ourselves um, to people who are going to be empathetic with what we feel and how we and what, what we're going through. So for me, I I, <laughs> I, I, I experienced it. You experienced it head on. You had a friend who told you, hey, you need to go to, to, to trainers. And, you know, for me, I, I had I had a, um, an array of brothers, um, teammates who they, they were very supportive and said, hey, man, you need to take care of yourself. Hey, how you doing? Even though I look like Casey, oh Casey, okay, he's fine. He's he's laughing. He's he's engaging and stuff. But you know, they know, hey, you need to take care of yourself. So, empathy is a big word that you know that I, I that's resonated with me um, um, over the course of this semester um, up until now. Like it, it, it's really set with me. It's really made me appreciate the need to be more understanding of others and what people are going through, even if you can't see it on the surface level. It's like you can't judge a book by its cover. So yeah, I want to make that for point. sure. Exactly. No, exactly that. Um, but just it's amazing what you learn in, in those in these experiences. You know, the not so great ones. You're just like, man. You know, I'm 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 low right now. You know, there's a lot going on, but you come out of it better. Whether you know, we rather not have to go through all of it, but you truly do come out um, a better individual overall. So. It warms my heart to know that you had people around you to say, like, take care of you. And a lot of times, some people don't have that. Some people aren't blessed enough in that way to say, like, I have a support system. I have people who value me, not for what I do, not for what I do for them, not for what I'm going to do later on, you know, just down the road. Like, they value me for the person that I am in this moment. Um, but I, I did want to ask you, did you feel silenced right because i st stigma silences people stigma keeps people keeps all of the things that we need to get out inside so did at any point did you feel like man i don't know i'm not really feeling right but i think i'm gonna just i'm gonna just hold on to it did you did you feel any of that absolutely you you feel you feel you feel yes you feel all these things it's and it's normal it's you know, it's 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 a part of it when we're young, especially you're going to you're going to feel these things. But like we're in college we're, we're we're both collegiate athletes. There's a lot of pressure on us day in and day out and we don't even recognize it. So you're going to end. And when you know something's taken away from you, you're going to feel that way. Or there's a possibility of something being taken away from you. You know, like 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 what, we're, what you've dealt with, what I've dealt with. You're going to feel silence a bit. Um, but, you know, I wasn't I wasn't silent for very long. You know, something I did. Um, I, I, I reached out because before I made my, uh, my decision to make the retire, I reached out to the closest people in my life, the, the people who are near and dear to my heart that included my parents, that included, um, some of my best friends that I made in college, who I call my brothers. Um, and then, uh, obviously my biological brothers and, and a couple of, uh, of mentor coaches, um, that I've crossed paths with. And I asked all of them, I said, Hey, what do you think? And you know, I had to express myself and, and what I was dealing with. And they said, hey, man, I, I, I was looking for two responses, either the, hey, man, don't worry about that. You need to go just push through that. Or the, hey, take care of yourself. I'm here to support you. I'm all, I always got your back. And, um, you know, more times than not, uh, all those conversations, I got the, hey, I'm here to support you no matter what your decision is, but you need to take care of yourself. Look out for your best interests. And that was something that, you know, I kind of um, uh, attribute to um, me personally, um, and how I care my care, how, how I've always carried myself as an individual is being respectful of others and also giving other people uh, like a voice of, of, of support, you know, like especially having a big locker room like football with teammates. You got to be there for your brothers. And, you know, sometimes the guys aren't and, some, and guys feel silence a lot of times. And I feel I, I felt like, you know, I have a I have a good track record of, of showing up and being supportive, being a voice of reason, being a being a, um, a, a person that can give great advice. And in a moment of time where I needed it, I was able to get that from um, these same people. So I feel like, you know, what I, what I dished out, I was able to get back in return. So I, and that's why I kind of attributed to uh, attributed um, that too. So, yeah. That's incredible. And that was actually another one of my questions, just uh, talking about some of your teammates and how they may have felt silenced by, you know, whether we had that nagging knee injury or, you know, something with the elbow, like anything there is physical or something like a mental health issue or a concussion, you know, things we can't see. Um, how, 
how that factors into it or what you've seen, but you, you definitely answered it head on. And, and, if and you Julian, wanted to add more. And, and, let, and, let, and let me add on more. My, my big thing is any conversation I've had with um, a fellow teammate, a fellow student athlete, I, I always tell them that, or I always like, I try to reassure that you, you are more than a sport. You're not, you're not limited to this court, to this ball, to this field. You're not limited to that, to that, to that, uh, the training room, that weight. Like you're not, that's not, you have no limitations to who you, who you are, who you can be outside this game, you know? And a lot of times we get, we, we, Sometimes by outside forces, but uh, but but by us as well, we condense ourselves in, in our in our abilities and our in our potential because we only have a a very limited scope of who we are as a person. Um, and you know, I I, I I I reassure that with myself every single day, and that's something to where like yes, if somebody had a knee and it was like, man, I gotta, I'm I'm just gonna push through it. I gotta I got I gotta go. I gotta go. It's like, no man, you're gonna put yourself in jeopardy for. You know, like, nah, brother, you okay. I respect you for even considering that. And everyone here is going to respect you because of what you do day in and day out. Like, you should, like, like, it's like, you don't need to put yourself on the line for that. So, yeah, I like that. That's, that's something that, you know, when, when, when that's come up amongst other teammates of mine, like, I've, I've always tried to reassure, like, you are more than this number on your back and in this jersey. You are way more than that. You know, so I, I I promise you that that that's what it is, and and um, I feel like that's that's helped that's helped me and that's helped others as well. Man, you are I'm I'm the exact same way. Are, are you okay? No, okay. That's it's fine not to be okay. You're more than this sport. What what if we just forget about this for a moment? Temporary. We just ignore it. It blows up into something bigger. Handle it now. There's there's you're gonna have more games and. Maybe you won't, right? But I, I need you as my friend, as my sister, as my bro- like my teammates, whatever, my friends, I need you guys to be okay. Um, so I'm the exact same way. And I, I appreciate you for being that for, for other people and as well as yourself. So you talked about um, in those three to four weeks, the positive affirmations, meditative prayer. Is that something that you introduced that you um, adopted in that time? Or is that something that you've been doing, newfound practice? And have you continued it uh, up until now? Right. Um, that's something that um, I, re- I implemented probably around COVID when COVID first started um, or um, early 2020, probably late, late, late 2019, early 2020, for sure. Um, that's when, that's when I've, um, um, I implemented uh, those things of, of you know, um, I, have, I have a board um, in my in my office uh, area where like it's like you know my positive affirmations. Um, you know, I do meditative prayer um, um, daily, and you know that was something to where you know you know how uh, people say when in in times of trouble you resort back to your training. Well, in, in this instance, I was in a time of trouble, and I resorted back to my habits, and my habits reinforced, you know, um, me, um, me being able to get out of this slump, getting out of this dark place that I was beginning to seep myself into. So it was just based off of the, the, the foundation that I had built, um, prior to, um, that, 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 that moment in time. And, you know, that's, that's so important, um, for, for people to understand is you need to have a strong foundation and, and your convictions and what and your values and principles and what you stand on, to where not so to where when you when we deal with things, you can you you know fall forward into you know um that 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 aspect of yourself. And and I can attest that that helped me out tremendously because I've seen other guys who went through this process before and they did not handle it as gracefully as others told me that I handled it. I felt like I handled it well, but of hearing other people tell me. Casey, I, I, I'm so proud of you for, you know, you handled this much better than other, than other people I've seen have to go through this process. And I was like, well, thank you. I appreciate it. But I mean, I, I just, I can only attest it to like, this is just who I am and what I've developed myself into becoming. So that, that, that's, that helped me during that time. And I, and I still do it to this day. I love that. Um, I think there's a lot to be said about just meditation or become, or any practice that involves developing that mindfulness piece. And I just wanted to, just to build off, to kind of wrap it up. In your 
meditative prayer, with those positive affirmations, if you could point to maybe one or two things that it's done for you, maybe it gave you peace of mind, maybe it gave you clarity, maybe it just allowed you to, um, I don't know, take things as they came to just better cope with your emotions. Like if you could point to one or two, one or two things that it that those practices do for you on a daily basis, what would those be? Absolutely. One thing for sure is it, I, I would attribute to like it. That's like my, um, you know, my meditative prayers. That's like that's my that's my self check, self check uh, opportunities. Like there's so much that happens in life. So many distractions, so many obstacles, so so much noise that happens on the outside. And if you and if and if you can't have like moments in your life to where you can, you know, come to a, a state of peacefulness, a state of quietness, and be able to reflect and observe yourself and what you're thinking and what you're dealing with, and be able to just recenter yourself, you know, that 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 it, you 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 uh you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. So that's that that that's what's that's what uh what's helped me. It's helped me be more reflective of myself and my actions. Um, it's given me uh the ability to to, to do self checks and just just evaluate where I'm at. Like, what's my what's my temperature? You know, um, at this at this moment. And um, also, um, I do something called uh sun salutes. You know, so it's 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 a it's a practice that's ancient to where um in sun salute meditative prayers. When the sun rises, um, and, you know, I I do my meditative prayer at sunrise, and that's basically when the sun is coming into fruition for the day. And it's like, okay, I I speak about what I want to manifest in my life, what I want to actualize in my, in my life, and then when the sun is at its zenith, at its peak, at noon, then I um, I seek what I want to my, my life to be balanced at, um, where like how I want harmony to come into my life. And I affirm these things. I mean, and I seek these to manifest in my life, and I sh- and I seek out to actualize these things. And then, when the sunset comes, that's when the sun is is beginning to um, set, and that's when um, I go to a moment of reflection and um, seek out what I want, uh, what I want in my life to leave or to be, um, you know, um, you know, um, detached from, detached from. So, um, those are those are some things that that that's helped me with. It, it helps me with with manifesting, with with having a vision, visualizing the things that I want to come into my life, and that's a part of the the my process of getting out of uh, you know, getting through this 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 turbulent time of change. Is I, I I visualize where I wanted to be six months from that from that injury from the, from from that moment, and it's it's coming to fruition. So I know it's, I know it's a lot, um, but I want to explain That's my great. process. I want to explain my process very thoroughly. So I, I hope that helps somebody if they if they hear it. It's helped me um, dearly. No, I thank you, <laughs> thank you for sharing. I I love that. I I really do. I'm all for. I'm all for it. I'm all for mindfulness. I'm all for centering self, clearing out, drowning out the noise, right? And there's this world is just so chaotic and we, we're constantly bombarded with information and opinions and, pe- and just there's so much clutter. And sometimes you lose yourself in all that clutter, but it becomes your normal that you don't know. No, you, you don't necessarily have to feel anxious about all the things that are being thrown at you. You just need a moment. You need a moment of reflection. You need to know to figure out what's important to you, what truly matters, what you're feeling, all of those different things. So however, I love the way you go about it. I really, I think that's really cool. I'd never, um, I mean, I've heard of sun salutation, but I, I guess I didn't know the depth of it. And I probably still don't, but just hearing you speak about it, I don't know. I'm, I'm can, I, can I give a suggestion of an app that of people course. can use? Yeah, there's there's an of app course. that I use. It's called uh, Insight Timer. Um, it's a uh, it's on iPhone. It's Insight Timer there, and it's like it's a it's basically an app for like de- like dedicated towards like people who seek out mindfulness, people who want like you know um uh med- meditations that are led by someone else or or good music that's you know um that's very soothing very relaxing so I- anything that you would think that you would need it's on there so it's it's something that that I use um very frequently so I w- I would recommend that to anyone insight timer insight timer okay so I'm going to download that later um it's there's a note made so we've been talking about Casey right we've been talking about just 
how you've handled everything and some of the practices you have, your thoughts, emotions, all of it. And it's very, it's been very you centered, but you're not someone who's you centered, like in no way, shape or form. Earlier, I referenced uh, the, your community service awards. Like that's incredible, but I, I just wanted to talk about um, Twin City Mission in, in Bryan College Station. So it's the oldest private social service agency serving Brazos Valley. Um, and you're on record uh, for just assisting them in, in their services. So I wanted to ask why why Twin City Mission? Um, Twin City Missions, we we had a we had a couple of different um, initiatives and, and events that we that we've that we've done with them as a football team. Um, and me personally that I've done um, not as a football team, but with different different student athletes. Um, but that's that's something I live by. That's that's one of my um, one of my principles is community and, and, and family is an extent is uh, a part of a community. And so, I, you know, that's 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 uh, that's a that's a driving value of mine. So um, I felt like if I if I can't have an impact on others, you know, then what I'm doing isn't um, it's not meeting up to the standard. That's my and that's just me. That's just my standard. If, if I'm not impacting others. And I'm not doing something right because, you know, for like, I, I feel that, you know, a, a part of my life, what I'm designing my life purpose to be around is serving others. So, you know, I, I think that's a that's a natural human element, you know, that uh, that I'm, I'm really starting to discover and um, and put on display even more. Um, and that's, you know, in, in 20 City Missions, that was something that, that, that that's that, that um, I've been a part of and. It's 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 absolutely beautiful to see the the smiles, to see the compassion, the cooperation, and just to see that you're you're, you're having some sort of impact um, in the, in that in that uh, in that way, you know. But there's there and and I, I didn't want it to just be Twin City Missions. I wanted to you know expand you know um, further further along with that, and that's well, you know what uh, what led to um, Blueprint being created. So. Hey, we love Blueprint. We love Black Excellence. Carlina and I obviously talked all about it. Um, I love what you guys do. I think it's absolutely incredible. Um, so again, thank you for that. Thank you for all of the service that you know Blueprint has done. And I mean, Casey, you're great. I, I think I, I truly admire you. Um, I think you're a tremendous individual. So, but I think this is a beautiful quote and you posted on your Twitter the other day. You said, service to others is the greatest and I, I had to say it just because I saw it and I was like, this is him. Like, this is this is truly him. And I, I wanted to bring that up to kind of tie a little bow around everything. So I think there's a really interesting dynamic with you just because in this moment, in your this chapter of your story or in this piece of your collegiate experience, this kind of final piece, um, you had to make a decision for you. It was a courageous decision of saying, I'm not okay. And I have to pivot. I have to do something about this. And the decision was to medically retire after a lot of uh, deliberation, just kind of sitting on it. You know, it's not an easy decision to make, but you're a selfish individual and you have been. And that's something that you live by. It's one of your values. Um, so where, what's the balance? When do you know? Because you, you said earlier, like you probably could have just kept on going, right? Even though you didn't feel right, you probably didn't like, man, I have to do this. I have to do this because I made a commitment to my teammates. I made a commitment to this program, to this school. So in all of that, when, how do you, you're a selfless person, but you needed to be, one might say, a little selfish in that regard. So how did you go about navigating that? Oh, man, that's, that is good. Selfless. Yeah, you, uh, you, you took the words. I, I, had, I had this conversation with, uh, with, it was either Miles, Miles Jones, or Jaden Peavy. Those are two very, very good brothers, um, um, and teammates. Um, yeah, they, it, it's you. You ride a fine line, especially in team sports, between being selfless and disregarding yourself and your well-being for the betterment of the team, for the betterment of your teammates. You're you're literally put your body, your well-being on the line for the group, and I admire that. You know. Then there's a there there's 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 always a moment in time to where you have to draw a line, you know. And for me, 
I I always the line always existed for me. I, I, for some, it, it doesn't. They'll they'll go to the lens of the earth, and for me, it's it's that the line was drawn, and it it it, it, it if there's something with you know. I want to be able to be at full capacity within the next 15 to 10, 10 to 15 years, 20 years from now. I want I, I want to do great things. I don't want this um, desire because that's all it was. It was, it was a desire to want to play football and and um, and meet the expectations of not only myself, but of, of others and, and what they put on me. So I'm, I'm trying to fulfill the expectations of others. And that's just I couldn't let that happen. So I had to be selfish. I, and, you know. Selfish has a negative connotation, but I think, you know, we can we we have the power to, you know, uh, change the definition of words. So we're going to put a positive connotation on that in this context. So, um, yeah, I have to be selfish in that moment. And, and, and I think I think for, for for people, you just have to establish your line. You have to establish like how far are you willing to go? And, you know, what, like, what are your, what are your, what's, what's, what's your, what's your values and your principles that you stand for? And for me, I couldn't I couldn't jeopardize my mental health, my mental well-being. It's it's a very serious thing, um, you know, that I was aware of. And if I would have neglected the knowledge that I already had of the severity of it, then I would be no different than the other people that I've criticized for, like going too far for a game. I would be hypocritical and I would have suffered for it down the line. So. You know, I, I, I that that's that's why that, I think people just have to define the balance. You need to figure out what's your line. You know how far you willing to go, and just and just make that like non negotiable. Like, yeah, this is it. This is it. Like, yeah, I'm I'm a selfless person. I'm all for this. I'm all for that. Like, but no, this is as far as I can go. And as long as as long as you like make make that clear within yourself, you will be fine with the outcome of whatever that have whatever that is. So, yeah, I think it's um, a really great point just to talk about how that line is different for people because I too see certain things and I'm like. No, that's, I understand what's at stake here. I, I get all that, but you get one brain, you get one body. Those things, I mean, I, I'm, it's, but again, it's tailored to every individual, but I think people do need to know uh, their, their values first and foremost in order to, to draw that line or you know to decide where it may be. So you oh, talked yeah. about, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Joe. I have to hit on this point too, just because it's, some I'm, I'm, I want to talk to student athletes in particular at this point when like for for in the context of being selfish, we have to understand that we are in a business where this like, you know, it's not it's not that we we fall in love with the game, you know, at an early age. But we we can't be naive about the especially with women's basketball, men's basketball, college football, baseball, like deep. <laughs> You're, you're talking about like like million dollar billion dollar like industries and you have to understand that this is a business so you're putting yourself like you have to be able to put yourself forward because coaches have the ability to do that they can make the best decision for themselves and not blink an eye players have that right as well and not just putting yourself in the transfer portal and going to a different school putting yourself forward as far as what I'm going to put my body through what I'm like what I'm going to accept what I'm not going to accept that's totally fine. So I think I think that that point has to be made to understand, like, yes, you you have that right to put yourself forward, to be selfish in that point, because this is a business and no one's going to care. I, I'm, I have to be frank about it. I, I have to tell this to myself, Casey, no one's going to care about the fact that you are forgetting things 15 years from now, because like no one's going to care about that you're, you're, cause, cause, because there's no offense to anyone. But, you know. You're only as valuable as like you being available to like, you know, like do something for for others and in lines and like we play sports. Like if you can't play, then you're not of that much value. So you like once. So once my once my like I'm telling you, once my once your eligibility is over, once my eligibility is over, that's nothing against people. That's just the nature of the business. Like you're just you're you're not an asset anymore. So like. You're not like so. You're not a liability for them for for people or the institution anymore. So like that that I don't, I don't want to go on the tangent, but that point has to be understood. I, I don't because I can. That point has to be understood that you have to put yourself forward because no one else will like put the by like, put you forward. No one else will look out for your best interests. You have to be the one to do it. So I, I wanted to make that point. I'm, I'm sorry, Jordan. I, I, I don't want to. I want to. No, no, sir. Look, 
you speak of facts. I, I <laughs> can also go on a uh, go on a tangent about that, but not that's a completely different conversation for a different day. But you you've raised all the points. Um, whew, man, that just made me think of so many things. We need to I, we need to have a group panel for that. That needs to be another no another, for sure another show. For sure. We're, it's been noted. <laughs> I'm writing it down. <laughs> but no, you're um, it's so true. It really, oh man, yeah, panel. So um, I just wanted to talk about, to kind of um, put it all together. You have a tremendous amount of foresight. You said, Case, no one is going to remember if you're forgetting. I mean, no one is going to think about or worry about you not being able to remember things years down the line. And that to me says, I need to make this decision for me now. So in the long term, I can be at full capacity. And you said that as well. So I want to ask, you had this dream of playing in the NFL and that dream is no longer in reach or, or in your path. And that's okay. Hard pill to swallow, as you mentioned earlier, I'm sure. But you seem hopeful about what you have down the road. So I wanted to ask one, what are those things? And what what's the dream? It's It's probably has something to do with serving others if if I if I'm getting your drift but what is it talk talk to me about that absolutely um yes um the the dream the dream was definitely to play in the NFL and it's it it absolutely is bitter it's it's bittersweet because you know you see all your your your, your close friends your teammates they get an opportunity they're getting an opportunity to accomplish to achieve their dreams a dream that you share with them you don't get to do it. And it's like, like I said, mentioned earlier about desire. And it's like, you just have, you have to be able to let it go. That's just not, that's, that's not attainable anymore. You're moving past that point in your life. That takes some bravery. And that take that, that, that's, that takes like, you have to be able to like have some, you, you got to gain closure. I recently gained closure from, um, from that. So I just wanted to, to, to make that a point to a true, but yeah. Um, for me, you know, my 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 dream is, um, you know, in particular, it centers around, um, you know, it's, it's 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 so many things. I I I want to be responsible and accountable for securing, providing, and um, and developing wealth. You know, like safety. You know, all these things for my family communities that, that I'm a part of, uh, the black community in particular, like that's, that's part of my dream or whatever avenue that is, you know, whether it's, you know, entrepreneurship, investing, you know, doing, doing community development projects, whatever that is, you know, still trying to figure that, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's there. It's a matter of, you know, just figuring out uh, which way you want to go, you know, so there's no limitation. I don't have a limitation on myself, you know, that's, uh, that, that's why I'm able to be so hopeful because like I, like I said, I, I visualize, I, 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 I say be and it is, and it will be. So, you know, and it's just a matter of time. So that's, 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 that's what it is. There's no, there's no quote unquote, like, you know, cliche dream for me at this point. It's a matter of like, whatever I put my mind to, that's another cliche. I'm going to do it. Like, you know, and just say, and it's, it's, a, it, it's a lot of cliches, but you know, that's, it, it's real though. Like, whatever, I feel it. I feel it. Whatever, whatever I want to happen, I'm like, you know, that's that's uh, that's what I'm going to make happen. So and, and right now, this is a very important time, um, like you mentioned earlier about uh, with one of the benefits of medically retiring is they cover your scholarship um, all the way through. And even out and for me, you know, that's 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 great. I get another six months of, you know, just getting a good get chance to like, you know, formulate plans and um, and just figure out, you know, what path I want to take direction and be, you know, strategize and. Hey, make it happen. So, yeah, I'm sorry I can't give you my exact dream, but I'm no, the, that's, I'm that's perfect. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. No, I I love that. I mean, you got to start somewhere, and I'm I'm essentially the same way. Uh, there's a there's something I see, and for me, my passion is being a resource for others, and however that may look. Media, I think, is a direction that I want to take with it because I the, there's so much power in visuals and seeing people who look like you in certain spaces, just knowing like man, that's possible. Or maybe this is possible. Maybe I can push it a little further. So, I mean, there's, there's so much to be said about that. And again, different conversation, but um, I think that's beautiful. I think that you, I, I'm excited for you. I'm excited to see what you come up with because I'm sure it'll be great. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, you, you answered it, you, you hit it on the, you definitely hit it on the head, but I just want to thank you. We can all learn something from you. I think anybody who watches this can, can take something from it. You said so much. Um, and I think it's really cool actually that you, so Carlina, one of the things that uh, she said, and I, I asked her, um, what do you want people to know about you? And she said, when I want something, I'm, I'm going to go get it. Or when I want to do something, I'm going to do it. And it's essentially what you just said, like, whatever I put my mind to, I'm, I'm going to go get in. I'm, I'm the same way. Um, and I think it's a great quality. So I just want to wrap it up with a couple light things, kind of this or that, but just asking a couple quick questions, less deep than everything we talked about. <laughs> Perfect. No, that sounds good. So what's your favorite restaurant in College Station? Favorite restaurant in College Station. Ooh, man. I would say um, Star Cinema is up there. Star Cinema Grill. Having a meal with Star a, Cinema is good. I'm, you're right. I, I agree yeah. with that. Having a meal with a movie is OP. So, yeah, I'll say Star Cinema Grill. I promise you, for real. So, yeah, Star Cinema Grill. Okay, what, you, what do you get? What do you order? Um, I get the wings. Um, and yeah, I get the I get the hot wings. Um, I want them, I want them, I want them cooked crispy, and then I want the side fries and I want popcorn, I'm a big popcorn person. Um, and yeah, it and it depends. If the movie's long, I'm a I'm a Marvel fan. Like I I, I like movies that are like, you know, in like in depth. So like if it's a if it's a two and a half hour movie, people say, oh, I don't want to see that. I say, man, I'm good. I can I get a hey, get a nice student discount on the ticket, and then go in there and and order some wings. I'll get the wings first, and then you know, I say, hey, I want this popcorn in thirty minutes. That's the I, that's why I like Star Cinema for that. They do a great job with that. So you know, I, a little endorsement for Star Cinema, but I got I got to give credit where credit is due. Of course, no, I love that. That that's a vibe. You just described an entire vibe. The movies, chilling, eating, enjoying it. Wow. That's that's my kind of time too. You don't seem like a. Uh, are you a television guy? Yes, I. Are I, you a television guy? Okay. I mean, I mean it, it, what it okay? It depends. It depends. I, I love movies. I love movies. I love. I can watch a good TV show. Okay. So music or TV show? What do you prefer? Which music, music is not, music. It's not close. Okay, so who's your favorite artist? So, okay, favorite. top. Okay, most in this moment. Because I, I change, I vary. Like sometimes I'm bumping Summer Walker out of my mind, and the next day it might be Bryson Tiller. So right now, who's your most oh, listened to artist? Jordan, that's hard. I mean, that's that's tough. Because I mean, for me, it's genre because it's like, okay, am I in a big hip hop like Kendrick Lamar, J Cole mood, or am I a hip hop '90s Wu Tang Clan pop? You know what I'm saying? Or am I in the Isley Brothers? You know what I'm saying? Voyage to Atlantis, 1970s. Like, it depends. I'll say right now, to keep it short and sweet, I'd say it's 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 a it's a toss-up between, uh, um, like, Jay-Z, Jay Electronica, you know, like, those guys. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm bumping those guys heavy. So, yeah, I'll, yeah, Nas, Nas, yeah, Nas especially. Nas just dropped a wonderful album. It's called Magic. And I'm a I'm a I'm a Nas advocate to the to the death. So yeah, Nas, okay. Jay Z, Jay Electronica. Those are my top three right now. Got you. I think it's really funny. So you mentioned J Cole earlier, and I I mean I love J Cole, love but J. I think we started talking in Slocum because we did. I feel like you were wearing a Dreamville shirt. I was. I was wearing. Some... A, I was wearing. Uh, I was wearing um something that said what was the line. Uh, choose wisely. Choose why it, it said choose, choose wisely. Choose wisely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think that was, and I remember. I was like, oh my gosh, now he, now, now we yeah. both love Jayco. Yeah, exactly. So wow, funny mo. I haven't thought about, or I didn't even think about that until just now. That was the first. That so was the first last question. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so cool. That's really cool. I love full circle things. Um. So last question: What is your favorite book and or top three if you cannot choose? Uh. Yeah. Um ooh, yeah, you you, you really get me because I, I I literally I have a I have a bookshelf right here I was reading earlier, actually. Um, but I'll say off the top of my off the top of my head. Hmm. 
I'll give authors. Can I give authors? Can I give uh, of course, whatever. All right, yeah. All right, author, all right, let me let me let me get authors. I'll say um I'll say um Dr. Amos Wilson. He is um uh, he's a he he has some great literature. Um um Stokely Carmichael Stokely Carmichael aka Kwame Toure, and then um uh I would say uh, the third one I say it's 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 a it's a toss up between. I, okay, yeah, I, I would say a "Message to the Black Man" by Elijah Muhammad. That's that's a, that, that's up there as well. So yeah, those, those those are. I have a lot of books though. So you like, you got you got to ask me another time. It'll be three different ones. So yeah, that, I'll give you that. Okay, you. we need to we need to get a KC book list book book recommendation. Okay, I can I can the people need it. I'm Just the people. Know. I want that, and I okay. think other people would enjoy it too. But Absolutely. seriously, I've had. An amazing time talking to you. Thank you so much. I've learned a lot. Um, you're great. You're great, and your oh, your yeah, energy, your spirit. It. I felt comfortable enough talking to you that day, just because there was something about you that said, like, I feel like we should know each other. I feel like we should be cool. And ever since then, that was what two years ago. At this point, I mean, I just. So much respect for you, um, and I wish likewise. you nothing but the best in your endeavors. I'm, I'm really excited for you. Like likewise, Jordan, I appreciate it. You you understand? I've admired you from afar for for a long time, and I I appreciate what you stand. I I, I do. I appreciate what you stand for and everything. And there's there's a there's this thing about having like like minded people being in the same room, virtual room, um, with each other. You know, hey, and you're able to you know do some great things. You know, come up with some great great concepts and ideas to impact others. So and I feel like we did that today. It was a great conversation. So I I appreciate. it. I'm looking forward to. I need some. I need invite back for a group panel or something. We don't. Oh group. no, we're gonna do it. You put it out there. It's it's in the universe we're gonna manifest it it's gonna happen it's a matter we're of when we're gonna do it there you go there it is there it there is but have a wonderful day thank you so much thank you as well